Do you want more performance, more torque, better fueling, better throttle response with less lag? If your bike is under warranty, making any change to your ECU DME could potentially make it void. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to clear the cobwebs away on plug and play performance modules. We're going to get into these features on these modules and compare them with an ECU flash tune so that you can make an informed decision on which option is right for you. We'll cover two of the leading piggyback modules which could unleash new levels of performance out of your R9T and put them up against the benefits of a straight dyno flash tune of your ECU. And if you're not familiar with those acronyms, ECU just stands for Engine Control Unit and DME stands for Digital Motor Electronics and is sometimes referred to as an ECM and Engine Control Module. Whereas a piggyback module is a third party computer module which plugs directly into your ECU DME. As well as plugging into all your engine sensors like the fuel injectors, airbox, crank position, gear position, throttle position via your existing electrical harness. Hence the term piggyback. Now if you're new to motorcycling and are not exactly sure what an ECU DME is, here's a simple description. All these acronyms refer to the same thing, they are the brains of your bike. A DME brain monitors many things, but its primary purpose relates directly to power delivery in every gear and every rev range. It controls the balance of the air-fuel mixture, otherwise referred to as air-fuel ratio, or simply AFR, but also monitors your crankshaft, gear and throttle positions. Its little brain does its best to keep everything running perfectly. But due to ECU regulations, your bike leaves the factory with a little bit of what we'd call bike asthma. Its ability to breathe in what it needs to deliver its highest and smoothest levels of power are restricted. A part of this is due to EU emission standards. Some would have you believe that EU regulations are the only reason. But in actual fact, BMW supposedly chooses a conservative mapping for a number of other reasons such as to greatly extend the engine's life or to make the bike more rideable through stop-start traffic though I tend to argue that point and to fit with a very wide range of riding styles not every owner will service their bike when due or use the best fuel or oil and also not every rider rides at a full open throttle and we're not all riding through non-stop twisties but if you really do look after your bike like it's a part of the family and have mitigated the risks of poor maintenance, you like to really open it up through the twisties or even more on private roads and closed circuits, then to enable your bike's engine to breathe more freely and provide more power and torque, you need to alter your R90's brain. It's DME. And there are two ways that you can do that. You can either do a DME flash tuning or you can also do a piggyback module install. And there's a third hybrid method, which might be the ultimate DME option of all, but I'll get into that later. A flash tuning or reflash is a direct method. Loosely speaking, you download new maps to a chip. It's a direct change in the brain of your bike, a little like Neo in the Matrix. Whereas a module is an indirect method. An analogy is like the Elon Musk's Neuralink brain chip. It's simply a physical plug-in or add-on. Flash tuning is a direct change to the existing internal code or mappings of the DME and requires your R9T to be dynoed by a professional tuner. A module on the other hand is an indirect enhancement which provides additional information to the DME which you can plug in at home and which doesn't necessarily require a professional tuner. So a reflash effectively overwrites the existing DME mappings, the timing and fuel offset tables etc. Meaning you can only revert back to the factory settings by getting another reflash done at a tuning shop. Whereas a module doesn't overwrite anything, it simply provides additional mapping information once you have plugged it in to your DME. Which means if you unplug the module or insert a bypass adapter, it automatically reverts back to the original factory settings. Note that plugging in and unplugging the actual wiring harness is not a 5 second job. Regardless which way you decide, both end up providing one big core change. A change in your power and torque. Not to forget to mention how that power is delivered. And additionally you can add accessories such as a quick shifter, push button tuning console and even wideband O2 sensors. For most of us the goal is to reach the optimal amount of usable power and torque while protecting the engine. Ensuring you're not running the engine lean or rich, but also not too stoic which is how it comes from the factory. The goal is to reach something slightly over an AFR of 13. 
which is what the piggyback modules try to accomplish with some trickery even with the factory narrowband O2 sensors installed. A reflash or a module will give you some really nice improvements via such things as fuel enrichment and timing advancement. And that's even without immediately changing your headers or other additionally expensive tweaks. Though naturally also doing those other tweaks will move your R9T yet to another level. Starting with the cheapest being installation of a high performance air filter, followed by wideband sensors and straight through pipes and going catless, not to mention replacing your headers and so on. I'm getting a bit off topic but if you're enjoying this video please whack that like button down below for me. Now back to the DME reflash versus piggyback module or the ultimate DME option. I had the same decision dilemma, so I dived in and did heaps of research of what piggyback module options offered versus straight DME flash tunes. And to save you hours of deciphering and head scratching, and to give you a head start on your own research, I'm going to share with you what I found out. Feel free to review these tables, you can simply choose the features you want to narrow down the right option for you. If you're mainly a keen road rider and track days aren't your thing, then I'd recommend the Rapid by Evo due to its full feature set. Feature packed yet a simple single box unit you can plug in and forget. And you can always add on the quick shift option later on. But if you want traction control or regularly visit the track or plan to, you'll likely want both traction control and launch control. In that case, you're going to have to go with the Rapid Bike Racing module. Not only will you get traction and launch control, but you can even refine your AFR while sitting on the bike, and a host of other track specific functionality. But I'd do Dynajet wrong if I didn't say that their offering, in my opinion, is also very extensive, albeit expensive, in comparison when you start adding more modules. I mainly recommend Rapid Bike due to its all in one module simplicity, which is loaded with features that Dynajet provides in additional plugins instead of a single unit. That said, earlier I mentioned there was a third option, the ultimate DME option. It's not so much something different from the other options listed on those tables, but is instead a combination of one of the module options and a professional tune on a dyno. You may well ask, well, why do I even need to dyno for a rapid bike? Doesn't rapid bike auto tune? Although you get a module preset for your R9T, it doesn't know exactly what type of fuel you are using in the bike. Here in New Zealand, riders could ride using over 95, 98 or even 100 plus octane fuel in their R9Ts. So we could all be using different fuel choices with the same initial map, which will yield naturally different results. That's why having a professional dyno tune can help further. So you might think, well, hang on a minute, I'll just flash tune and forget about the rapid bike or power commander module but then you'll lose your auto adaptability. Once you've done these kind of changes, you've gone as far as you can go with your engine using DME Magic. Next we'll be looking at all the other areas of your exhaust system. I hope sharing my research has helped kickstart your adventure into engine management performance upgrades. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like down below, or to help me reach my 2023 goal of 1000 subscribers, hit that subscribe button.